crisis has only just begun. The global banking industry is facing a number of challenges, including rising interest rates, bond losses, loan defaults, and competition from fintechs. These challenges could lead to a banking crisis in the coming years. Rising interest rates. As central banks around the world raise interest rates in an effort to combat inflation, banks will be forced to pay more for deposits and lend money at higher rates. This could squeeze bank profits and make it more difficult for borrowers to qualify for loans. Bond losses. Rising interest rates also depress the value of bonds and other fixed income securities. Banks hold large portfolios of these assets, and losses on these portfolios could erode bank capital. Loan defaults. As economic growth slows and inflation remains high, the likelihood of loan defaults increases. This could lead to further losses for banks and make it more difficult for them to lend money. Competition from fintechs. Fintech companies are disrupting the banking industry by offering innovative new products and services. This competition is putting pressure on traditional banks to reduce fees and improve their offerings. Long-term trends. In addition to these challenges, the global banking industry is also facing a number of longer-term trends, such as the decline of cash transactions and the rise of digital currencies. These trends could further disrupt the banking industry and make it more difficult for banks to remain profitable. Is a banking crisis inevitable? Given these challenges, it is possible that the banking crisis of 2023 is just the beginning. However, it is important to note that banks are now better capitalized and more regulated than they were in the lead up to the 2008 financial crisis. This should help to mitigate the risks of a systemic banking crisis. What can consumers and businesses do to protect themselves? Nevertheless, it is important for consumers and businesses to be aware of the challenges facing the banking industry and to take steps to protect themselves. For example, consumers should consider diversifying their deposits across multiple banks and credit unions. Businesses should also review their credit lines and make sure that they have a backup plan in case their bank fails. Here are some additional tips for consumers and businesses. Consumers, stay informed about the financial health of your bank. Check your bank's website and social media pages for updates. You can also check financial news websites and rating agencies for information about your bank's financial health. Consider diversifying your deposits across multiple banks and credit unions. This will help to protect your savings in case one bank fails. Be careful about opening new accounts or investing in new products from banks that you are not familiar with. Do your research and make sure that the bank is reputable and well capitalized. Businesses, review your credit lines and make sure that you have a backup plan in case your bank fails. You may want to consider opening a credit line with another bank or with a non-bank lender. Diversify your investments. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Consider investing in a variety of asset classes, including stocks, bonds, and real estate. Be prepared for a potential economic recession. Make sure that you have a strong cash flow and that you are able to reduce costs if necessary. The banking industry is facing a number of challenges, but it is important to remember that banks are now better capitalized and more regulated than they were in the lead up to the 2008 financial crisis. This should help to mitigate the risks of a systemic banking crisis. However, it is important for consumers and businesses to be aware of the challenges facing the banking industry and to take steps to protect themselves. government's interest expense will increase more between 2022 and 2024 than in the 51 year. Interest expense will increase more between 2022 and 2024 than in the 51 years prior. And with about 30% of government debt that needs to be rolled over the next 12 months, this could become a big, big drag on the economy. And the second way it affects the economy is corporate borrowers. Corporate debt is similar to government debt in which it's not do at the same time, adding to this lag effect. Now, most companies, sort of like the government, they spread out their debt, so there's only a small amount that's actually maturing in any one year. So it can take time until the more expensive debt replaces the cheaper maturing debt.